A drum's playing surface is called the drum head. It's the part of the instrument that vibrates, creating sound. Some drum heads are still made the traditional way from animal skin. But a natural skin is very susceptible to temperature and humidity changes. So most drummers today prefer heads made of modern synthetic materials. The drum head surface is often called the skin because traditionally it was made of calf skin. The synthetic skin is a flexible plastic film called polyethylene terephthalate, the same polyester-based plastic they use to make soft drink bottles. Workers load several sheets of it into a press that applies 75 tons of force onto sharp circle-shaped dies, pushing them upward through the film sheets. The die-cut film circles become the skins. A skin can be made up of just one film circle or several taped together. Workers assemble the layers using a vacuum turntable. The suction keeps the bottom film steady while they apply tape to its outside edge and then adhere another film on top. Each layer is called a ply. The more plies a skin has, the more bass frequencies it'll produce. Now the skins go onto a computer-guided drill press. The machine drills tiny holes all along their perimeter about an eighth of an inch in. The holes are roughly the size of a nail head. They're spaced about a quarter inch apart. The next machine heats the edge of each film to soften it, then applies pressure to mold it to shape. The skin comes out with a fluted edge, like what you see on a paper cup. This shape keeps the tension even when the musician tightens the skin to tune the drum. Meanwhile, this roll-forming machine uses a series of pressure rollers to gradually shape an aluminum strip into a hoop. The hoop will hold the skin tightly over the drum's body, called the drum shell, creating the tension you need to produce sound. This machine also imprints tiny dimples onto one side of the strip. When the factory later glues together the skin and hoop, this rough texture will improve the bond. Now the machine folds the edges of the strip inward to create a channel on the inside of the hoop. That's where the glue will go. Once the machine finishes forming the hoop, a small built-in circular saw cuts the end. A worker then loads each hoop onto a rotating soldering jig, positioning the ends together. The rest is all automated. A glob of silver solder on the joint. Then natural gas torches fuse the hoop closed. After water cools off the hot metal, the jig ejects the finished hoop. Drum head hoops can be as small as six inches or as large as 40 inches in diameter. Finally, it's time to fit the skin into the hoop. This is the tricky part because the film must be perfectly level and centered. Otherwise, when you tighten the skin to tune the drum, the short side would tighten before the rest, and that uneven tension would throw the tuning off. So they do this critical assembly step on a specially designed table, placing the skins on circular vacuum fixtures that are perfectly level. As suction holds each one steady, a robotic arm runs glue in the hoop's channel all the way around. The glue drains downward through the tiny holes along the skin's perimeter then dries, anchoring the skin securely in the hoop. Some drum heads go on to get a textured coating. By adding weight, the coating muffles the higher sound frequencies, enhancing the lower ones. This produces a warmer, deeper tone. It also produces that swooshing sound when jazz drummers play softly with brushes. Once the coating dries, a pad printing machine stamps on the company name. Only about 30% of drum heads on the market are coated. The rest are what's known as clear heads. And that's how drum heads are made.